Today I'm melting glass bottles on ceramic mushrooms. So here they are, we'll let them sit out and air dry and tomorrow I'll trim them and assemble them into their final mushroom form. So here it is after a bisque, and I want to glaze each one with this cream breaking rust on the inside and on the stock, and we'll put a white glaze on the top before we put our test bottles. So I've let the cream breaking rust air dry, and now I have a kitchen white, Zirko Packs white, a real white white. You'll notice I'm going to dip down in here and just by the nature of how I'm putting it on I'm not going to be able to uh, get a glaze on this rim. So as much as it curls over I really don't want to to flow in but we'll make the tops white. That's what we'll do here. So it came up over the edge a little bit, but there's going to be a gap. I mean, it's just a test piece. It doesn't really matter. So here's what we're doing. The mushrooms are all glazed up. We have a white glaze on top. And I want to take these little glass bottles, fill them with different things, set them on the mushrooms, and we'll do a melt test. Now, when I melted the last glass bottle, it was a broken kind of a wine bottle. I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool to take a take an old beer bottle and maybe I could put something in it treat the glass like a glaze and put something in it so it wouldn't run quite so crazy but before I did that I thought maybe it would be good to take a, you know another brown glass bottle and we'll do a little mini experiment and if if it works I mean it would be sweet if it could a carry a color inside or distribute a color and B if we could get it to drip and not break off that would be that would be sweet so to do that it's going to be alumina that we're going to be working with the most it really is uh, my best guess as to the stabilizer to use so i'm going to put uh, 100 percent alumina up to the top in one of these i'm going to do three of them where i fill it 50 percent with alumina 
and 50% with a colored glaze or an underglaze. I want to use a red underglaze. And then these two I'm going to do with a heavy flux. One we're going to use Ashley's Rivulet and then I'm actually going to put pieces of copper inside. And then number two I want to do a wood ash test. So we'll pack it full of wood ash and we'll see what they do. So for the red underglaze I'm going to use this Duncan Ceramics Dark Scarlet and I thought I would just try to squeeze it in to a reasonable level, maybe top of the shoulder. I think that looks good. So we'll see what that does. Alumina, dry alumina on the bottom, and then the red on top. So this one will be fun. This is a rivulet glaze, um, so we're going to go the other way from the alumina. We're going to add a runny fluxy addition. This is actually Val's rivulet that I made with uh, my eggshells. Some of that was left over. And then I'm going to take some copper wire. And I don't want anything that's too too thick, but I want five or six pieces. And we're going to throw those in there too. And hopefully they don't fall all in the same direction, but those copper will definitely give us some crazy running and hopefully some blues and greens, blacks maybe, but we'll see. Okay, so here's the final lineup. We have Illumina. We have Illumina with John's Noxema on top. We have Illumina with red underglaze and then floating blue over Illumina. And then these will be our two fluxy ones. We'll have uh, Val's Rivulet with copper pieces inside and then a bottle full of wood ash. So I'll get those in the kiln tonight. And each piece I'll put on a drip, drip tray. So hopefully the dome will clear the foot will be, it'll be easy to remove. So here they are, all six bottles on top of their mushrooms each with a drip tray and we'll fire it off and tomorrow we'll get to see what happens. What a mess. Failure on the drip tray, failure on the drip tray. So we had two fall over, have the glass bottle fell off on this one and the alumina is still, still powdery. What a mess. Well, you don't know till you try. We had one that didn't fall over. Let me see if I can get these out. We'll take a look, see what happened. So here's what we have. I'll take you through each one. We have a couple lessons learned on this firing. Right off the bat, lesson number one, don't use drip trays that you have not previously bisque fired. I've done it before, I haven't had problems, but that's what caused these mushrooms to fall over. I'll run you through each one, but you'll see that the, these two fell over because of that, and that kind of ruined it in my mind. Made a big mess in the kiln. So, let me take you through them. Test number one was the Illumina only in the bottle. It fell off completely, it fell off the shelf down to the bottom of the kiln, and so we have no test. Fail. Test number two, we have the Illumina with John's Noxema on top, and this one's interesting. It's the first one, you'll see on a couple of these, it's the first one that uh, the Illumina is still sitting here. And yes, this is a fail, but I find it interesting that this was actually in the bottle, that the glass and the liquid glaze completely melted over and around and apparently under it, and it still stayed powdery. So, for what it's worth, I thought that's interesting. And let me see, you can see the Noxema in the drips. So a little bit of Noxema there and another lesson learned on this one is this is the only drip tray that I put in the other direction. See the drip tray? Oh, it's actually broken in the middle. Was thrown to be used the other way and to last minute I thought well let me, let me, what are the odds that there's going to be so much from this little bottle that it's going to run and it's going to go out and of course that's exactly what it did. It went out and on the shelf. So. I have penance to pay with the grinder cleaning up those shelves later, but 
Lesson learned. Rim up. Test number three. This is the red underglaze on top of the alumina. And as before, the alumina didn't blend well. But one thing I didn't point out on this one either, but I've noticed so far, these have been out of the kiln and are cool. And usually by this point, the glass is pretty crazed. So that's either a function of the alumina doing its job in some way, or uh, possibly this glass is different than, than a normal uh, beer bottle. But nonetheless, it's not crazing yet, which is really kind of cool. But this is the one that we put the Duncan Ceramics underglaze in. And you can see that the underglaze actually did nicely streak in the glass. So it works. The underglaze uh, stayed nice and red. So that's interesting. Test number four. It was floating blue. And this looks pretty cool. But the blue that carried in the glass, and look, let me show you this. Look at that drip right there. It's kind of cool. You can see that the blue streaks down nicely. I don't know. I think that looks pretty cool. So that's number four. Okay, test number five. I'm really bummed about this. This is Val's rivulet in the copper. Lost the tray. The thing fell over. And the whole thing got dumped onto the shelf. So no test. Complete fail. And number six. This is wood ash. In fact, it didn't stick at all. And it's actually, look kind of, almost feels like it frosts up when I touch it. Really shiny though. How cool is that? So obviously the glass is a little thicker where I made the, the pocket for the bottle to sit. But that is a good contestant for maybe filling a beer bottle up and making a big mushroom. And seeing if we can do something like this. I still like the colors in the other ones, but in terms of overall aesthetics, I think that this is our winner. So what are my other big takeaways? I think the idea of adding alumina is a good one, but it's obvious that it can't just be put in a powdered form. Perhaps taking it and mixing it with water and trying to coat the inside of the bottle or making up a little glaze with a you know small amount of bentonite or something and trying to get it more homogenized. For the ones that I had put the underglaze on, I would have mixed those with the glazes and the underglazes. I would have mixed those together at least. but. Uh, so mixing the alumina, I think, is important. I think there's still potential in adding colors. Floating blue looks like it'll be amazing. So I think what I'm going to do is make a bigger one now, big enough to hopefully handle a beer bottle. I'm going to put use wood ash, but I'm going to try putting some blue in it and no alumina, and we'll see what happens. I hope you found that interesting. That's it for now.